Hello everybody, just let me begin with a really small thing. Here I'm not actually singing. This is, was my data viewers at Torino, it was a, a chat, but I think it was a nice picture to put, but everything, everybody thinks I'm actually singing. No, I'm not singing here. So, <laughs> once I've said it, let me start. So, uh, I will be talking to you about open data and data journalism. I don't know if everybody is familiar with the concept open data to start. Open data is a movement that is requesting governments all, our, all among the world, regional governments, national governments, to open all the data they can open to the public. Why they should open this data? Why is this movement asking the governments to open the data? Well, first of all, for ethics. That data, it's our data at the end. So we have the, the, same, the same right as the government have to use it. Second reason why people are demanding open data. For economics, if we open the data of the governments, also the companies can actually use that data in order to take better decisions that will have impact in the society. Why we are requesting to open the data? Well, I'm sure that the room is full of PhD candidates, it's full of PhDs who at some point had some problem with data, who struggled to find data. If we are actually opening that data, we are ensuring a better science. For reason, for efficiency, and this is the most important one. If we are, open, if we are opening the data, we are showing everything that is happening inside. It's like, you know the, the, that flat from uh, when you were a student, when you were a, uh, a student and your mama was coming to your room, what do you do? You clean everything because it's open. If we're opening the data, we're ensuring that the government must clean up the data. <laughs> And that's why we need data journalism. If we have data journalism that have the eyes over the open data, data journalism will, will be that mama that it's seeing if things are clean up. I will show you this in two examples. The first one is uh, an example we've done in Data Press. Uh, the, it's uh, the side project we have on data journalism. The topic here was to analyze what was the most covered topic in the Parliament of Catalonia in the last term. Well, uh, the first thing we do it is, as everybody in the room will do, was to go to the open data portal of the Parliament of Catalonia and start downloading all the sessions. Well, what's the first problem we encountered? The data is in PDF. This is really nice. PDF is a format that where, where you can actually actually read the data, actually this presentation is a PDF, but PDF has a really big problem with machines trying to read it. PDF is not an, an, an easy format to be read by machines. We should ask our governments to open the data not just to be human readable, also to be machine readable. So, once we became able to open that data, we applied some NLP algorithms and machine learning. I will not enter here, just to uh, classify all the, all the interventions said by parliamentarians among the different topics that can cover the parliament, the, that were covered during the term. Well, we were able to see how every single deputy was, were distribution each topics, uh, were distribu- ah, sorry, oh, what a mess. This 20 seconds is struggling me. <laughs> So uh, we can see how every, dip, how, how every deputy distributed among the different topics. We were also able to see the same thing with the parties, which topics were more emphasized by some parties, meanwhile other topics were more emphasized by other parties. We were also able to see how the topics were evolving among the time. This, this was, as, I, as, uh, as I've said, this was uh, published in a newspaper called a Critic. A Critic is a newspaper specialist in uh, investigation journalism and in politics. So the audience of the critic was really surprised by this. They were really aware of what was happening in the parliament and they were, fi they were finding more things thanks to this analysis. Let me show you the, I, sorry, and this was another conclusion. So that data journalism still needs, needs the journalism. It's not that we are using data journalism to take, to take the journalist out. Journalists still must be there to analyze the data that data journalism can take out. So, this is the second example. This is from uh, New York. It's not mine, but I love it so much, so I just wanted to share with you. New York City is one of the most open data cities in the world. And well, if you go to open, uh, if you go to New York, you can actually not park next to an Hydran. Otherwise, you get an a fine. But what's the good thing about this? As uh, New York is a so open data city, you, you actually have a data set with all the fame, all the fines, all the tickets that were done in New York. So you can actually filter that data and look for all the fines that are just for in New York City. 
That's cool. Well, you will see here there are two very big spots just in the south of uh, Brooklyn, uh, in the south of Manhattan, uh, near the bridge of Brooklyn. These two hydrants recollected $60,000 per year each. That's a lot of money. I mean, I think almost everybody in the room would like, like, sal would like that salary, right? Well, the Ben Wellington, who was the author of this analysis, what he did, he, he went with the, with the street view to, do that, to those hydrants, and he found a really interesting thing. Between the parking and the hydrant, there is a bike lane. Of course, that makes the law more ambiguous. You, as a driver, don't know sure if you can park there or not. So people who are getting fined to park in a place, they were not sure if they could park there or not. That, that went to Reddit and stack to became viral and viral and viral. It became enough viral to arrive to somebody in the city council that actually solved that spot and painted that road. And this is the amazing thing that could happen with open data and data journalism. We could help our society to make him better. Thank you very much.